beautiful people. I'm so excited. In today's video, we are going to be talking about uh, how to stay safe when traveling. I forgot. Good thing I wrote it down. Okay, so the first thing that I have is to use your street smarts. Um, some people know what that is, some people don't. So you have book smarts, which is the education that you get when you are in school, you learn it from books. And then you have street smarts, and that's the education that you get from life, right? Living, hanging out with your friends, going out and experiencing life, street smarts. Um, when you travel, it's really important that you use your street smarts. Um, one of the things that I said was like, learning to read people so being able to look at a person and you know like are they fidgety do they seem a little bit off do they seem really calm do they seem really anxious paying attention to those things when you travel is really important i think sometimes people just go through whatever they're just like let me get on the plane let me get off the plane let me get on the train let me get off the train blah 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 whatever and it's very routine but the truth is you really have to pay attention because people are crazy in case you didn't know pay attention um another thing oh that's another thing pay attention not just to how a person is acting but pay attention to your surroundings pay attention to what's happening around you um you know whether they're sometimes there could be an altercation is it too close to you is it far away is it something that you need to be um, cognizant of or not um, do you need to pay attention to the couple that's over here and the people over here um, knowing who's around you that's important like if you're god forbid but if you're somewhere and your bag gets stolen and you have to report to the police it's like hey you know I don't remember a whole lot there was a lot that happened but I know that there was a couple over there maybe they saw something and then there was a family over here that those little things help police a lot because then they can go and ask them and maybe they paid attention to something that you overlooked right so pay attention and vice versa you might see something that might be able to help someone else um also so if you are a female whether you're traveling in a group or if you're traveling alone i think that it is really important that you look people in the eyes um depending on the country that you're traveling to it's like okay that's actually not true i think that it's really important that you look people in the eyes especially men now there are cultural norms and things that you should be aware of some countries it's a little bit different than others but for the most part the reason i'm saying this is because if someone is has the intention of doing something to you and you look them in the eyes and you're like hi i see you a lot of times they'll pull back and they won't mess with you um now you don't have to be like i see you however you can be like hello right you can be a little bit nicer um you don't have to be super friendly like hey like no no, no don't do that but um it's just simply saying that i see you like i feel uneasy i don't necessarily know if it's you but i'm going to take the opportunity to look at every person that's around me in the eyes so that i see you um i think that's really really important for women in general whether you're traveling or if you're at home number two go with your gut so when you are traveling if you feel like um you know hey I've been out I'm kicking it with new friends or I'm hanging out with my friends we're having a really good time but I think I should slow down when it comes to drinking slow down all right if you're walking somewhere and you're like yo I don't think that this is a good place and you're like I think we should turn around turn around it's really important that you listen to your gut so important um, because a lot of times like your intuition especially as women we like no I don't know how to explain it but when you're traveling your senses are heightened because there's a lot around you that's new and that you don't know and when your gut tells you like mm, listen to it I think that's really important actually funny story about that my friend Nicole and I went to Hong Kong um, five years ago and while we were we had a lot of things happen in Hong Kong 
But while we were in Hong Kong, uh, there was this huge celebration. Um, there was a huge festival. So there were like, there was this huge parade and lots of people. And we ended up just, we were just walking around, um, checking out Hong Kong. And we ended up, man, you guys were so special. So there's like this temple and there are all these people like burning incense and it's it was like really cool and we were walking further down the street and Nicole's like yeah I think we need to turn around and I'm like yep I think so too and sure enough like what I would judge to be gangsters I don't know but I was like I don't need to find out and at first it doesn't look like that but our gut said like turn around and as we were turning around like all these guys came out of this building and I was like whoop time to go so listen to your guts number three um don't give too much information i think this is important whether you are a man or a woman whether you are traveling in a group or whether you are traveling solo do not give too much information just don't so don't tell people this is your first time out of the country this is my first time to this country um don't tell people uh how long you're gonna be in the country depending on what your gut says don't even tell people your real name i know that sounds crazy because ugh, that sounds crazy however safety first right you don't know this person you don't know if they have good intentions if they have bad intentions you you just don't know now you talk to people all the time well i'll speak for myself i talk to people all the time and uh when my gut says like I tend not to like give them my real name. I tend to, I don't tell them where I'm staying. I don't tell them how long, like what I'm actually doing in the country. And it comes with how they're asking questions. Some people genuinely ask because they just want to know they're starting a conversation and other people ask a series of questions that are very, what I would deem to be very personal and prying. Um, like they're very specific, like how long are you going to be in the country? Who are you traveling with? Where are you staying? How long are you going to be staying there before you go to your next destination? You don't need to know all of that. That's me. No, we did not click on a deeper level. We are not friends. You don't need to know. So don't give too much information. Um, stay safe. Next. Ah, this goes with don't give too much information, but don't tell anyone where you're staying right? Unless they are like, if you are in a uh, tour group and this is like before you leave your house and your friend's like, Hey, what hotel are we staying at? That's where you tell your friend or the person in your group where, which hotel you're staying in. Don't tell people where you're staying as like in general, right? Unless just don't tell people meet at a central location. If they're like, Hey, I can, I'll meet you at the restaurant because you don't know them and people are crazy i believe that human beings are wonderful and amazing and that we're really good right initially innately we're good however the world is crazy and as people become adults they lose their minds and they do they're crazy right so their interests are definitely they don't have your best interests at heart so when you're traveling don't tell people where you're staying because People will stalk you. People will follow you. People will want to find out all sorts of information about you that they don't need to know. Um, this is how people get kidnapped. This is how people go missing. Don't tell people any of that information. Um, also, tip, especially for the ladies, but fellas, if you want to take it, feel free. Um, when you are checking into a hotel, whether you are with someone or whether you are by yourself, when you go to your room, I recommend that you do not go directly to your room. I recommend that you walk, if there are other people around you, I recommend that you walk past your room until the hallway is clear and then go back to your room. Especially if you are traveling as a solo woman. That's my tip. Um, also, when you're in your room, check your room. Um, I know that sounds crazy. My mom is a flight attendant and that was one of the first things that she taught me. She was like, you go through your room and you check to see like, you check behind the curtains, you check under the beds uh, and you check behind the doors and in the closet. And it seems crazy, but you guys, there are crazy people. Traveling is wonderful. Be safe. That's all I'm saying. All right, next. Um, 
have copies of your passport and any paperwork that you need. So if you um, need an invitation letter to get into a country, if you um, need, like if you need a visa, um, if you're staying as a student for a long period of time or anything like that, have extra, have an extra copy of all of that. Um, I personally have four copies and that seems like crazy. I have the original, um, then I have a physical copy that I put in my suitcases, one of them. Then I have a digital copy and finally I have a copy that I give to someone at home that I trust. So whether it's like my sister or my mom or my brothers, I say, hey, I'm leaving the country. I want you to have these documents in case something happens. And God forbid, um, you know, maybe I don't have Wi-Fi. That does happen in places. Um, and so then I need for them to send a copy to whoever needs a copy and they can do it for me. So that's what I would recommend, but at least have two, especially of your passport and your visa, especially. And the reason is because people are crazy and when you go to big cities like London, um, Barcelona, Madrid, Paris, um, Tokyo, Ho Chi Minh, there are pickpockets everywhere and they will pick, passports are hot, that's a lot of money, right? So just be careful, number one, but number two, have a copy so that as you go back and you get like your passport and you report it to the police and all of that, like you have, you're like, hey, this is my passport, this is the original, um, you know, it's in a color copy and then they can help you with that. They are doing construction right now, how about that? All right, let me finish. Whoop. Okay, <laughs> we're back. Next, um, know the numbers for the fire department, the police, and the EMT. Um, you should at least know these like before you go to a country. Um, countries like mine in America, we have one number, 911. And in countries where I live, like Vietnam, they actually have three separate numbers. Um, so there's here are 113, 114, and 115. And each one rings someone different. And so it's just important to know what those numbers are because they vary from country to country. I believe in Korea, it's 119, which for me, I think I would struggle with because I'd be like, ah, it's opposite. Um, but you get what I'm saying. So just keep those in mind in case you need them. Hopefully not for yourself, but maybe if you see something or um, you know, there's like an accident, something like that, you can at least call. That's important. Um, and then the last one, carry extra cash and an extra debit card or credit card. Um, it's really important that you take the cash that you're gonna go and have fun with. And I recommend a minimum of an extra $100. Um, and I recommend that you have if you can, an extra $100 in your own currency and an extra $100 in the currency of the country that you're going. Um, and the reason is, is because things happen, right? Sometimes you can get stuck, you can get delayed. Um, you might have to hail a cab somewhere or take alternate transportation. And instead of taking that money from your fun money, you have extra cash. I also recommend that you hide that money in your luggage or on your person somewhere that no one else would really know about, that no one else does know about. Um, I think that's really important. I have had, oh, I've had my fair share of like, I have no money when I travel. <laughs> that's why it's on here. And like I said, it's a safety thing because if you're stuck somewhere, you have money to get unstuck. Um, bring an extra debit or credit card because sometimes, as you travel, some of the ATMs and banks don't talk to each other. Um, I learned this in Hong Kong. My friend Nicole and I, uh, it was a Sunday evening and I wanted to buy a bag and so I went to an ATM and I put my pin in and it was like wrong, error, and I was like, that's weird, I'll try again. I tried a second time and it ate my ATM card. Not cool. Um, and then she tried and it ate her ATM card now, thankfully, I had brought two, but um, we later found out it's because that particular bank in Hong Kong did not talk to our bank in the States. So like the, whatever, 
however they talk to each other, whatever like that, the systems or whatever, they didn't match. And so that bank as a precaution, a lot of times they're like, oh, this is a foreign card. Um, it's a specific type of foreign card. And so that bank tends to take those cards. And if we would have gone in the next day, they would have given us our card back. But it's like a security measure. Like a lot of times these cards are stolen is what we were told by someone that came later to the ATM. And she was like, oh, it's probably just that, like a security measure. It was really interesting. We learned a lot. Bring an extra ATM card or debit card. Um, and that's all I have. Those are my tips for traveling safe. Um, okay, that's it. I'll see you guys later.